for any Jeopardy nerds out there, um, (laughs) it's almost like Jeopardy. Okay. So, you know, they, they give you the answer and you have to say the question. So think about it this way. The answer is inside your podcast. The question should be the title. Welcome to Podcast Coaching for Kingdom Entrepreneurs. I'm Kristen Fields Chadwick, your podcast coach on this transformative podcasting journey. Our mission, empower kingdom entrepreneurs to confidently launch and grow podcasts, fostering a journey of being seen, being heard, being known, and making a lasting kingdom impact. This is Podcast Coaching for Kingdom Entrepreneurs. Your voice matters. Welcome, wonderful podcasters. We have another enriching episode of Podcast Coaching for Kingdom Entrepreneurs, and I am delighted that you are listening in, and I know this is going to help you enhance your podcast today. I have the honor of introducing to you Whitney Lee. She is a PR strategist and a brilliant, true marketer. Whitney is the founder of True Story Public Relations, an award-winning creative agency dedicated to helping businesses in the hospitality business, products, service industries, coaches. Man, she is all over helping others market themselves. She has a superpower that lies in cutting through the noise and developing custom strategies that truly move the needle for frustrated business owners and influencers who are just trying to be seen. She is also the brilliant host of True Story, the PR podcast, where she shares tangible ways to market your podcast, your business, and have simple strategies to help you connect with your ideal customers through social media, email marketing, and so much more. So podcasters, if you want another podcast to help you further your podcasting skills and your marketing skills, then I would suggest you go download, follow, subscribe to True Story, the PR podcast. Now, Whitney's mission and her message is so clear, and it is really to help podcasters, help influencers, help coaches and business women who and men who are running their businesses and ministries, making marketing really simple, actionable, and profitable. She is going to share with us today four tips to increase your podcast reach at the end of the podcast. So I want you to stay tuned because First, she's going to share her story. She has walked the walk. She has talked the talk. She has been in those same shoes that maybe you have stepped in where you feel real insecure about maybe the sound of your voice or, man, who am I to step behind the mic? Remember, we've talked a lot about imposter syndrome here on podcast coaching, and she is going to share her own story and then share her own four tips for us to increase that podcast reach. All right, so let's jump right in. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Oh, okay. Today, we have the privilege of having Whitney Lee with us today. And she is not only going to give us some tactical tips for podcasters, but she's also going to be sharing an amazing story that she has of her own journey of using her voice, getting behind the camera, and using that mic. And I know that you are going to love her just like I have loved getting to know her. So welcome to the show, Whitney. Hey, Kristen. Thank you so much for having me today. Yes. I love that you're in a coffee shop because (laughs) it's like so the atmosphere sounds amazing. This is just real life, y'all. Yeah. (laughs) Real life, y'all. You just got to get it in where you, you know, wherever you can. I love it. I love it. Okay. I first, you have a podcast called True Story, the PR podcast. I just want to make sure I got that right. True Story. Yes. And it's, I've really enjoyed getting to listen to it since we, we met in a networking group or a, a branding group. And it's been really fun to just hear your perspective because you have a different perspective because you're more yeah. like marketing and, and, and PR in that world. 
Yeah, absolutely. So I I own a PR agency and we focus a lot on travel and hospitality-based clients, but we also do a good amount of service-based clients, which is kind of where the podcasting came in because we started suggesting to our clients that they should have their own podcast. And a lot of these people were like, why should I have my own podcast? And we're like, well, you're a physician or you are a chiropractor or one was a, you know, there's all different kinds of people. And so it positioned them as an expert. Mm -hmm. And that's why, and they had so much knowledge to share that was more long form content that's like, kind of too much for social media. So we kept encouraging them to start their own podcast to really help grow their, you know, like position them as the expert at their topic. And before long, then I was like, you know, maybe I should do my own podcast. So that's kind of how, and I'm a huge podcast listener in general. I honestly listen to more podcasts than I do music now. Like I used to drive around in my car listening to music and now I'm like, no, I, I love listening to podcasts. So it's been such a fun journey. And we actually have someone on our team now that edits podcasts for our clients and everything. But we also help them a lot with the strategy. Because what's amazing to me is people that are experts sometimes don't realize how much of an expert they are or what they should be sharing. It's such common knowledge to them, right? They've known this for years. They went to school for it. It's not that big of a deal. But to other people, it's like really valuable knowledge. So you know, we have been in the podcasting space for our clients and for our, for our agency for probably, I don't know, maybe like five years, three, three to five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's experience right there, there. And I love that you say what I often say here too, is establish your voice as an expert and an authority in your field. So a lot of our listeners are coaches and entrepreneurs and one of the best ways to get your voice out there and to be known for a specific thing that you help solve is to press record on your podcast. And I love that you do that with your clients. So on your podcast, what are some of the main topics that you talk about? On there? So we kind of, we do a little back and forth. So I alternate every week or we drop a podcast every Monday and it's always one week. It's an interview. Next week, it's a solo interview, solo interview, solo. And we talk a lot about marketing and PR, but I try to make it like really fun and approachable because even I, I mean, I'm in the industry, but I hate listening to podcasts that are like super techie talk. Like I want real You know what I mean? I want someone to talk about what's really happening on the day-to-day basis, not using all these acronyms that other people, you're, you're never going to reach people by talking over their heads, right? Um, Podcasting, in my opinion, is like social media from the standpoint that like, it needs to be authentic and real and down to earth. Like, yes, you are an expert, but you don't have to sound, you don't have to use big words or crazy terminology to make people respect your knowledge. In fact, I think that's why people listen to our podcast is because it's not that way. It's fun and it's approachable. And it's like talking with your coworker in the office about what you're going through that day. And and the same thing with my interviews. I just tell the people that come on my show, I'm like, don't, don't feel like you have to, this isn't an educational seminar, right? This is real talk. I just want you to be yourself and shoot everybody straight as if you're talking to a friend. Yes. Oh, so good. So good. Okay. So go check out her podcast. Now Mm -hmm. I would love for you before we talk about tactical tips on, on really how you can help our podcasters. I would love for you to share your story of, I mean, we all, we have all struggled with it from time to time. Is that voice insecurity? The, the, oh gosh, who am I to get behind the mic, get, get behind the camera. I know that's part of my story as well. And so I'd love for you to share your journey from going from where you were to an award-winning journalist. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so funny to even hear someone say that about me. But (laughs) so for anybody who doesn't know in the PR world, it is not our job as publicists or PR professionals to be the one in front of the camera, right? We, it is our job and and maybe somebody out there doesn't know this, but in PR, our job is not sales. Our job is visibility and awareness for our clients. So what we're doing all the time is trying to get them seen in the right place with the right message. And so what we're doing is we are 
pumping up our clients, right? We're not pumping up ourselves. Like I don't go on camera and talk about my clients. I get my clients opportunities to go on camera or to go on podcasts and talk for themselves. So a lot of times we're prepping them and helping them understand what they should be talking about or giving them bullet points of ideas of what to say. And then we're the ones behind the camera kind of like cheering everybody on. So I say all that to say like, I, I mean, am I, I don't love being on camera, but I, I, I don't hate it. I'm around it a lot, right? It's the industry I work in, but it's usually me behind the camera. So about, gosh, I want to say 2016, maybe I had a guy in town. I lived in Destin, Florida at the time. And I had a guy in town who I knew and him and I had worked together. He was a web designer and a videographer. We worked on some projects together and he reached out to me via email and uh, we weren't like best friends or anything, but I knew Jared and he was like, hey, I have this idea. I want to start a thing called Get the Coast. For those of you who don't know, Destin, Florida is a really small town. They don't have a news station there. And so our news would either come from Panama City or Pensacola. So there's no like TV station. We had one little newspaper and he's like, I want to start like a... Uh, a news station, quote unquote, if you will. But I want it to be like fun and young and hip and approachable. And like, I, I don't want it to be like a buttoned up, you know, TV show. So he's like, but I need someone. He's like, I'm a videographer. I need someone to host the show. And I thought he was asking me for recommendations on who. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, well, you know, like, let me think about it. Maybe I have a client or somebody that would be a good fit to host your show, you know, like what are the topics? And he wrote back and he was like, no, Whitney, I was, I was asking if you would host the show. And I was immediately like so uncomfortable. I broke a sweat when I read his email. I remember the moment I saw it. I, it feels like yesterday. And I was like, oh my God, what does this entail? Like, um, so I finally, he said, look, let's just give it a shot. And we're going to talk about what's happening around town, new developments, new restaurants and businesses, some things that are going on with city council, some local events happening, you know, just just stuff around town. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I can do this. I can talk about that. So I go and we film the episode. And I remember the night before he was going to launch it, I didn't tell a soul. And I think I purposely didn't tell anybody because I was afraid of probably of judgment. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, afraid of people like laughing at me and being like, oh, that's so funny. Isn't that cute? Like you're trying to start your own little TV show. That's adorable. I don't know. I, I guess it's like fear of judgment or fear of failure. What if, what happened if, you know, like we posted this and then nobody watched it or everybody like made fun of how dumb it is or whatever. So the night before the first episode, it was just a social media thing. And on his website, the night before it went live, he sent me the episode and he's like, hey, I'm going to post this tomorrow. Is this okay if I share this? Like, I, I wanted to give you a first shot of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting on the couch and I saw the thumbnail and I could see my face. And I kind of was like making a funny face because, you know, a thumbnail, like they'll right. catch you in a weird moment. Your mouth is open or your eyes <laughs> like crazy looking. <laughs> I remember looking at the thumbnail and immediately I was like, oh, my God, I can't watch this. I cannot watch this. I cannot watch this. I I literally got nauseous and I was like, I no. I uh and like I I didn't realize it, but I didn't respond to him. And like an hour later, he was like, Hey, I really need to schedule this for tomorrow morning. Like, is this good to go? Yes or no? And I just told him, I was like, just do it. If you think it looks good, just do it because I cannot watch this myself. Yeah. I've always kind of had an insecurity about my voice. I didn't have an insecurity, but it was people who kept saying this to me of like, mm. you have such a deep voice for a girl or like, you're really monotone for a female, like, you know, or they would say like, you should be in radio, which really means you have a deep voice for a girl, right? Because deeper voices work well on radio shows back when radio was really a thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm dating myself here, but anyway. <laughs> So I had all these stories I was telling myself. So the episode went live and I was terrified to look at the comments or whatever, but my phone blew up of a million <laughs> people like, oh my gosh, look at what you're doing. That is so cool. And it is so professional. Like who did this for you? What is this about? Where is this from? And it like literally blew up. So then we started making the show every single week. And before long, we had sponsors giving us money. Because like, hey, how do we sponsor the show? We had a bank that reached out to us and said, how do we sponsor the show? 
Then we had a shopping mall that wanted me to wear their clothes. So I got, yeah, all right. I got all these clothes for free. Not that I was an influencer or anything, but they wanted for a shout out, they wanted to feature their retailers. So I got clothes for free. We got sponsorship money. We got, I mean, and also just my PR business in general got a lot of visibility because I was the girl from Get the Coast and it literally changed everything. And before long, like we ended up winning a statewide award from the Florida Public Relations Association for the show. We won like one of the highest state level awards you could get for the show. And I just always think back to myself of like, you know, if I would, my first reaction was to tell him no or to offer someone else in my place. That's what, as a publicist, that was my first thought was like, I should just, I should offer up a client or something. But I'm so grateful I said yes and pushed myself out of my comfort zone because a I made a lot of money on it that's cool that's that's the that's the smallest benefit I got from all of it but it is cool we like money I made money off of it I got fun clothes out of it I got to meet amazing people that I interviewed on the show but more than and the award all of that is cool but more than that I like developed this belief in myself of like I am good enough to be on camera yes you know what I mean? Like I can do this. I, I, you know, I, before, I guess it was always, I, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not, my voice sounds like a guy, all these stories I was telling myself. Yeah. And, uh, I, so I guess I'm just so grateful that I got out of my own way, you know? Yeah. And I think that's what we, a lot of us do is like, we, we tell ourselves it's other people, right? It's other people that are judging me and doing this. Is it though? Is it, or is it something you're telling yourself, you know? Yeah. Oh, so good. And I, I want to point out to our listeners and I, I guarantee you, (laughs) there are so many people listening that resonate with, with so many points in that story, whether it is getting behind the camera or it's getting behind the mic or it's writing that post or it's writing the book or or whatever it is (laughs) that you have those internal stories that we all have. And we all have to walk through training our brain to be like, you know what? Yep. I hear that. And I'm going to move forward in a brave way. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to be totally scared doing it, or maybe there's going to be that narrative going on in my brain. And I'm choosing to do it anyway, because then we're starting to prove to ourselves, Hey, we can show up and we are enough and we are worthy of sitting at the table at the mic at the in in front of the camera any of those things that applies to so i love that and i think it's such a cool story of going from being the the publicist to now you are the public figure of of mm-hmm. that of that tv show and how well it did and so kudos to you for saying yes <laughs> Even though it was scary. (laughs) Thank you. I'm so grateful that they asked me to do that. And I don't believe it was a coincidence either. You know what I mean? And it's not even about being famous or anything like that for me. I sincerely enjoyed it more than I thought I would. So sometimes my first reaction was discomfort, right? But it actually became something I really loved. And I would have never known that if I would have just let fear hold me back. And we always say that like fear comes from a few places. Like it comes from fear of failure, Mm -hmm. fear of judgment, which those were my main two, or fear of success. And some people do really have a fear of success, of maybe like reaching success and losing it all. That wasn't my fear. My fear absolutely was fear of failure and fear of judgment. And, you know, I I look back on that now and I think to myself, like the only way to get through fear or the only way to get past fear is to go through it. Mm -hmm. Like whatever you're, whatever you're afraid of, it's really not that bad. You should probably just go for it. And the amount of, again, like I, I, the amount of belief I developed in myself was the greatest thing that I received from that. And I don't care anymore. Like, there's so much now I'm like not self-conscious about my voice. I'm I'm not worried about being on camera or being seen or anything like that. It's just, it's been something that legitimately changed my life and I'm so grateful for it. Mm, So good. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying the different kinds of fear that can enter in because it absolutely is so different for everybody. I mean, 
even pointing out the fear of success. That's a real fear for a lot of people. And oh, yeah, that, that's so good. And so clarifying of like putting words to what you're feeling and the hesitation of moving forward with something that you know you want to do, but there's, there's something holding you back. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said all the lessons that you've learned in it of yeah. moving through that fear you have learned now that you actually enjoy it and you loved the process and what a gift, what a gift. Uh, yeah. Don't rob yourself of joy just because you're fearful at first. You know yeah. what I mean? If anything, it made the joy even greater by the fact that I was fearful at first. So I feel like if anybody's listening out there, if you're afraid of something, whether it's being seen or having your own podcast or starting a business or whatever the case may be, Ask yourself, like, which one of the, where is the fear coming from? One of those three, usually fear of judgment, mm -hmm. fear of success, or fear of failure, and then dig into that. Yeah. Mm, so good. So good. I feel like we could have a whole show talking <laughs> about just that. And I know I, I so want to, like, dig for gold in your expertise in marketing mm -hmm. and would love for you to move into what are those tactical tips that you wish that podcasters knew to help really promote and grow their podcast moving forward. Yeah. So I think the first thing you want to decide is like, who are you actually speaking to? And that'll help you with what content to make. But I do like to do a mixture of content. And I think everybody should start off that way of an interview and a podcast. And that's exactly why I do mine half and half like that. But because some people love listening to interviews, but some people also love listening to solo podcasts. And I find yeah. that a lot of podcasters don't know what to talk about. And so they just do all interviews because that helps. It kind of puts the ball in the other person's court, right? Like you've got mm -hmm. someone to talk to and you're not in this awkward moment of like feeling like you have to make a presentation. Mm -hmm. But I will say this. Interviews are great for helping your show get more exposure. You know, A, it's great to like feature and connect with another expert on a topic similar to yours. So that's great. But interviews, the main purpose of an interview at the end of the day is to help your, your show get more exposure. But what I find is actually solo episodes are more successful usually. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because if someone's listening into your podcast regularly, they like you. And they're yep. resonating with you and your knowledge and they want to hear from you. So I, we actually see a lot of times that solo episodes do better than interview episodes. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you for your podcast, that's the first tip, is to test it out. Okay, try a little bit of both. Try interviews, try solos and look at the data. I'm a total data nerd of like, you can't operate. Yeah, you can't operate your business. And we do this for our clients too in the agency. We don't operate our business off of feelings. Yeah, we have a lot of experience and we've been doing this for a long time, but that doesn't mean anything. Things mm -hmm. change, industries change, different audiences want different things. Nothing, it, you can't operate off of feelings. You have to operate off of facts. So I would encourage you whatever platform you're using, like we used Anchor for a while. I think Anchor got bought out. So it's, I guess, Spotify, Spotify. now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I do log in there and I look and I see which episodes get the highest visibility and the most listens and all that good stuff. Because that tells me what type of content my people like and mm -hmm. I know to continue making that. So mm -hmm. it sounds overly simple, but start by testing it interview solo, interview solo, and just look at the data. And that'll help you decide, you know, I have some friends that just went away from interviews completely because the, their solo episodes were just absolutely crushing it. So if people like it, give them more of it, you know? Yeah. So the, tip number two, I would say is when you're doing these interviews, be strategic in who you pick to be on your show. Now, yes, you definitely want someone who is an expert in their field to actually educate your audience. But one big, big benefit of having an interview is more visibility. So look for somebody. And, and when I would ask them to be on my show, I would say like, hey, would you be willing to share this like with your LinkedIn audience, with your Facebook audience or inside your Facebook group, whatever plat everybody has a different platform that's like their thing. Share it on your Instagram or do you have an email list or whatever? 
that's one of the first things I ask them is getting their buy-in to help promote the episode. So mm -hmm. strategically, I look for people who are experts, but they also are very active in promoting themselves and their brand. So take a peek and see, check them out on multiple different platforms. And a lot of times I find great guests from other interviews. Mm -hmm. I hear them being an interview on someone else's and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love their style and their take on things. Like I should totally have them on my show. And also another great resource is a, a platform called Listen Notes. I don't know if y'all have ever talked about Listen Notes on the show, but it is a an incredible resource to find good topics and good people and mm -hmm. other good podcasts. I think it's a great opportunity to reach out to other podcasters and say, hey, can we do a swap? Maybe I'm on yours, you're on mine. Like, So be strategic in who you are inviting to be a guest. You know, It needs to be someone within your realm who can provide value to your audience, but at the same time, like, you want them to promote it so that it helps your it helps your podcast reach more people. So that is probably what I would say is number two. Okay. Um, yeah, hopefully this isn't too much. I'm like, oh, we'll, okay. we'll have to drop this in the show notes because I'm a nerd sometimes and I like write down stuff I hear on podcasts or I'll be driving and I'm like, I need to write this down. You so. too. <laughs> yes. Yep. I'm taking notes right now for our show oh, notes. So oh good. my gosh. I have two more. And the okay. last one is definitely the most valuable that a lot of people miss. So the next one is sharing on all of your platforms. So sharing on all of your platforms. I know this sounds really elementary, but mm -hmm. it's actually a huge thing. And a lot of podcasters don't do it. You definitely need to have a plan on, you know, I have my team every Monday when the podcast episode goes live, it immediately goes on all of our social media platforms. So Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We also take take the episode and we write a description of the episode and we have a blog page on our website. We actually don't put it on YouTube yet, but we really should be. We're going to be doing that in 2024 because we filmed through Riverside where it, it gets the video. You can also film on, on Zoom or whatever, but YouTube is an incredible platform. So I want to make sure you are utilizing all of your ways to promote it. So yeah. the first thing I would do is if you're recording on StreamYard or Riverside or Zoom or whatever, I want you to pull video that makes your guest look really, really smart. Not you. Makes mm -hmm. your guest look really smart because they are more likely to share it if it's a moment that they make a really good point, right? Mm -hmm. So pull some video snippets and that needs to be what you promote on all of your channels. And you could do different little, if there's like several sn video snippets, absolutely more power to you. You know, we usually post twice or three times about each episode. One will be a video. One will pull like a quote. And sometimes the other one will be, it just depends, another video. Or sometimes we'll post like a meme about a point that they make, like something <laughs> funny and then drive people back to listen to it. So pull a video that makes your guest look really smart and share that. Also, one thing that we missed for a little while, and I didn't even realize it because I get busy with work, right? My team was posting it to Instagram, but they weren't sharing it to the stories. Yes. So I, as soon as we started sharing to the stories, tagging that person and their business page, and here's the big kicker, is providing the link. I mean, the link can be in your bio too for your regular post. That can be the call to action. But in your stories, you need to have the live link right there. And here's why. If you make people go through all these steps, they're just not going to do it at the end of the day. If I've learned anything about being a marketer, you have to make stuff so simple, crystal clear of so-and-so's on the podcast. We talk about this. Click here to listen now. I even make the button say, listen to my podcast or listen <laughs> now. Uh -huh. Because if you don't provide them that link, they're not going to go digging for it, y'all. I promise. And the beauty of it is, is when you post it to your story, that person who is your guest is probably going to immediately turn around and share it, you know? And so that also gives a, a direct, A, it's going to help grow your following, but B, the link is already inside of there for them. So you have to make it easy on your guest and also your audience, or they are less likely to listen. 
Yeah. I'm not kidding y'all. I notice a difference. The moment we started posting it to stories with a link, like the listens went up immediately. Yeah. And there's no, there's, that's not a coincidence. So especially, okay. So another one is cross posting on Instagram. If your guest is on Instagram and that's a platform that you use, you can ask them before you post it. You can't do it after you post. You have to ask before you post it, but it can be like a shared post that goes on their feed and on yours. So definitely ask them about that. The collaboration. Um, yep. It's like a collaboration post. Okay. Yep. So at the time of, of recording this episode right now, you cannot do a collaboration after you post it, but you never know. In a few months, yeah. they may change that. But <laughs> um, for now, you have to ask about a collab collaboration post before it's actually posted. Collab posts are great. Share it to your story. And definitely, definitely, if you're pulling video, YouTube is such a powerful place. And the biggest reason why is because YouTube is owned by Google. And Google is the controller of all things internet. Let's just be real. So when people start searching for topics, video is such high valuable content that Google will suggest videos, right? So on your YouTube, you need to A, add the episodes as a YouTube and write a description. There's also tags for video. And actually, there's a great resource, a, a platform called TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy will actually help you name your YouTube video. It basically looks at like naming structure and what people are searching for on YouTube. And it actually helps you pick a title for your YouTube video that will help it get further reach. So fun little fact for y'all. I'm a software nerd. Look up TubeBuddy. It's a great resource. So that's the third point is sharing through all your platforms. Pull a video that makes them look smart. Share it to your story. Cross post with your interview guests and add it to YouTube. <laughs> Awesome. That's a that's a big one. <laughs> this is so, great. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing to me how many people make a podcast and then they just expect people to listen to it, but yes. they don't promote it. Yes. Oh, I I just wrote a whole post about this exact thing of it's like making a fancy dinner and then forgetting to invite people and tell them what time to be at your house. You <laughs> wait a minute. You, you just went through. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you, after, if you're going to put the work into creating a podcast, invite people to listen. You know, that's the key to it. You can always, I, I say this to my clients all the time. You can have the best hotel, restaurant, art gallery, doctor's office, whatever. You can be the best, but if no one knows you exist, you'll never survive. No. You'll no. never make money off of it. You'll never grow. You'll never profit. People have to know that you exist. And that's exactly why I will always have a job. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's like people and businesses are always going to need visibility, especially in such mm -hmm. a noisy world, you know? Yeah. Um, all right, y'all. So here is the last tip that I think is by far the most oh, valuable one. Hmm? You, you have five tips. We're on number four. Yes, so. there's actually four. Sorry. Okay, got it. I've okay. got four total. <laughs> okay, some of them kind of like bleed into each other. So, okay. but this one is a really important one that most people don't think about. It is the importance of what you name your episode. If you just throw it up there and say like, talk with Whitney Lee on my podcast or interview with Whitney Lee from True Story, that's not interesting to people. That doesn't grab anyone to like, oh my gosh, I have to hear what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So it is very strategic in what you want to name your episode. I hate to use this word, but it's really a word that most people will understand is clickbait, right? Something that encourages people. Clickbait is not always negative, y'all. We, we see it as a negative term. But basically what clickbait means is like something that piques so much interest that people are like, well, I, I just have to know. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to know. Like, I, do you guys see those articles on BuzzFeed that are like five ways to make your hair grow faster? Yes. <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Five ways to eliminate wrinkles without Botox. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> everyone out there is like, I have to know. And they click on oh. the article. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm -hmm. think about that when you are naming your episode. It is important for you to tease what's in the episode, but don't give it away. Okay. So it's kind of almost like writing a subject line for an email. I'm such a nerd, y'all. I, I will sit and work on 
a subject line for an email blast for 10 to 15 minutes because it determines, it is statistically proven that a subject line plays a massive role in whether or not people open the email. So this is the same thing, y'all. Okay, so one tip is putting numbers into your name. So like today's episode, four ways to make your podcast go further with Whitney Lee of True Story Public Relations. I don't know, something like that. Four ways to, you know, get your podcast listeners up or four tips from a PR pro about podcast listening, you know, or podcast reach or whatever, but you're not giving away what the information is. Mm -hmm. I actually had an episode on my podcast recently with a woman who is an incredible expert. She was the head of HR and communications at Whataburger for over 20 years. And it was probably one of the best episodes I've ever, and one of the most insightful interviews I've ever done on my show. I could have legitimately talked to her for hours and hours. And somehow I missed it. And I, I'm usually the one that names the episodes because I just did the interview and it's fresh on my brain. And I'm like, oh, I know what I want to name this, you know? And somehow I got busy that day and I just pushed it through. And one of the people on my team named it something and posted it. And the name was just kind of like, you know, like how to have a good work culture or, or it was like work, you know, office culture with Pam Nimick. Or something like that. And the episode yeah. got like no love. And when I like started digging into it, I saw the episode name and I was like, oh, how did I oh, miss yeah. this? <laughs> and I went inside of the, the platform and I looked at the data and it was like getting no listens. And I was like, this is insane. This woman has a huge LinkedIn following. Also, she's an incredible expert. Like, how did this happen? And I looked at the episode name and I'm like, okay, I'm going to change the name. I changed the name to like, I can't even remember y'all. I was like, five ways to increase your team's productivity or something like that with Pam Nimick. And immediately the episode skyrocketed. And now it's one of our most listened to podcasts. But it was just because that boring title didn't get anyone interested, yeah. you know? So it is so, so important that you... It has to be short. Don't Don't make it a a three sentence title. It needs to be something short that teases them of like, I want to know the five ways to have a more productive team or mm -hmm. five ways to make my hair grow or whatever. So use numbers, make it short, tease it, but don't give it away. And I always say, here's a fun way to think about it for any Jeopardy nerds out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like, Jeopardy. Okay. So, you know, they, they give you the answer and you have to say the question. So think about it this way. The answer is inside your podcast. The question should be the title. Wow. That's so, perfect. <laughs> the answer is inside of your podcast, but you, the question needs to be the title. So the question is five ways to get a more productive team or four ways to make your podcast grow in the next year with Whitney Lee. You know, the question needs to be the title of your podcast. And I promise y'all that alone, just naming your podcast the correct thing will help it go further. So because you have to remember, people are searching for certain things and also like what you actually name your podcast can help because mm -hmm. you know I specifically put PR in in the title of my podcast name because I want people who are searching for PR to find my podcast so just keep that in mind like you either need to have like your topic in the name of your podcast or maybe the who you're helping yeah you know if you help moms you know with postpartum Maybe your the name of your podcast is something with the words mom and postpartum in it, you know, mm -hmm. hope for postpartum moms with Sarah Smith or whatever, because women who go out and search for the word postpartum or motherhood or moms are so much more likely to find you. So set yourself up for success with people being able to find your podcast by the actual mm -hmm. name of your podcast show and by the specific episodes. Yes. Oh. So good. And 
so in line with what I, I share with a lot of my podcasters and then some, this has been so incredibly helpful and meaty. I'm, I'm walking away with so much notes that I've been taking and like, oh my gosh, I'm going to use that example to help teach podcasters. So, oh man, so good. Anything else that you want to share before we, we start to wind down here? Hmm. You know, I'm just a big believer in putting yourself out there, you know, like what's the worst that can happen is it, you make, you know, uh, especially with podcasts, they say that you'll make the top X percent if you just keep going. Most people start a podcast and give up on it, you know, so if you are one of the people that just keeps going, you're already going to reach one of the higher percentages of podcasts. I can't remember the the whole stat of like most podcasts end after the first 20 episodes or something like that. So if you just stick with it, you're going to go further than most people do. And, and I think that's true to be said in a lot of things in life is like our world is so obsessed with immediate gratification that if you try something and it immediately doesn't get a million views, it immediately doesn't make you thousands of dollars. People are like, well, this must not be for me. And, and I tell my clients that too with PR is like, this doesn't happen overnight. Do some people go viral on social? Cool. And your dance video gets a million views. Great. More power to you. Will that happen once in a blue moon? Sometimes. Yeah. But like most of the time, consistency is the only thing that's going to set you apart from other people. So you don't expect it to be, you're not going to get a million downloads overnight newsflash. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I'm a huge realist and I want you to have realistic expectations with going into podcasting. But yeah. if you're passionate about helping people and providing value to people, you'll keep going. Yes. You'll keep going and just keeping on and keeping on will grow your podcast. So that's my encouragement to y'all is like, don't give up if you don't get a million downloads overnight because newsflash, that's not going to happen. You know, you can't give up just because it doesn't blow up overnight. So it's going to take work and it's going to take consistency, but it's so worth it. And it's so fun to help the people that you want to help or, or to help the person that you once were, you know? Yeah. So good. So good. And I know everyone is going to be like, okay, how do I, how do I find Whitney? <laughs> I need yeah. more Whitney in my life. So I would love for you again, share your podcast and where people can connect with you personally. For sure. Okay. So if you want to find my podcast, it's True Story, the PR podcast. We should be anywhere that you listen. And then if you want to find me personally, I usually hang out between LinkedIn and Instagram. So on LinkedIn, it's just Whitney Lee. And on Instagram, Instagram, it's the Whitney Lee. So T H E Whitney Lee. And if you want to read more about True Story, about what we do there, you can find us on any of the social platforms. And also, our website is truestorypr.co, not.com. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you again for offering so much gold. I knew it was going to be just a phenomenal interview and just excited to continue to meet or meet and follow and listen and see what you're doing because you are definitely a person that I want to follow and hear your latest thoughts and, and wisdom. So thank you again. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me on the show. I would love to connect with y'all and yeah, listen to the podcast. It's a lot of just fun, free advice about how to market your business or, or your podcast. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for listening today. Hey, I want you to know that there is an opportunity for you and I to connect. I would love to do that. Find a link below and we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one free 15 minute consultation. I want to hear where are you in your podcasting journey and how can I help serve you and help you bring that kingdom impact dream into reality.